Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are back working on the 34, and we are on part two of correcting the stance of the 34, and uh, this is the fun part. So we spent the first video taking the old axle apart and doing all the dirty work of knocking everything apart just so we could get what we wanted to use and keep from the car and some new parts. In between that video of breaking everything apart, I started going back through my axle collection and I think I mentioned in a couple videos, I chose an axle that was narrower, but the spring perches, it was a later axle and the spring perch area was actually the larger size, which was gonna require some machine work on that axle. Uh, typical of myself, I have crap all over the place, and I was like, let me just look a little harder in my collection of stuff and take some measurements. Well, I measured an axle that I started to fill, uh, and, or I'm sorry, fix, that is an old filled and dropped axle when we were building the T, and I abandoned it because it was just too pitted for that car because I wanted to like re-chrome it, and uh, it wasn't going to work. Well, I put it back on the shelf, forgot about it, Went back and measured it, and it turns out that it is a 33-34 axle that was heated and dropped and filled back in the day. And the way that they heated and dropped it, it actually made the axle about an inch narrower. So the other axle was definitely more narrow than that, but this one is still going to bring the wheels in a little bit. But the good part was we didn't have to get a custom spring for it because the spring perch locations width-wise were correct. And also the height or thickness of the axle at the wishbone area in the spring perch was correct as well. So we can take our wishbone right off this car, slide it in on that, and everything should work well. So change directions, um, and I'm gonna clean up that axle, paint it, and uh, start swapping all the parts over. I'm gonna show you guys the process for cleaning everything up, show you hone, uh, knocking out the old uh, spin or uh, kingpin bushings, putting new bushings in, reaming them, and all the nonsense that goes along with that, and then of course heating and dropping the spindles. It's a lot of work. I'm gonna get busy. All right, so you saw in the last couple shots, I took the SCT and I cleaned inside this uh, center section here to get all the major rust out of there. I used those little narrow wheels that just came out uh, from Eastwood for the SCTs and it worked really, really awesome. It was actually a lot easier than using the wire brushes that I normally use on the drill. Uh, so what I've been working on, it's been a time consuming part and this is something I've learned from my previous mistakes over the years and I like to share this with you guys, is take the time if you're reusing an old axle to ream out all these holes and make sure that everything slides together and fits really nicely. There's nothing worse than having all these nice, all these painted parts and going to put everything together and you gotta smash things together with the hammer. You really shouldn't have to smash any of this stuff together. So what I use is a, uh, kind of an arsenal of things. I have two different size round files that I use that I go up through and sand um, or file in these bores, what happens is a lot of times if it's an axle like this or that was sitting off the car out in the open for quite a long time, what'll happen is water will build up around the edges of these bores and you'll get a, a ridge um, that you makes it very difficult to get these things apart and also back together. So a lot of times I use heat and what the heat does is it makes the metal a little softer and everything moves around so you can get stuff apart. The sax was no different. What happens is you then have a ream and when you go to put it back, uh, a ridge, then when you go to put it back together, you have to smash it together with a hammer, which you don't want to do. You want things to go together by hand for the most part and maybe just a light tapping with a, you know, with a small hammer on some of the stuff. But the, the kingpin and the spring perches should basically just drop in by hand. There should be no major play. You should just kind of spin them around. I put a light coating of wheel bearing grease on them when I drop them in. And everything should just fit together really nice. So I use the files to kind of knock things down and, and take any rust out so I have nice shiny metal all the way down through. 
Uh, sometimes, in this, this axle's case was, was the case, there was a pretty heavy ridge, and also it was almost like a flat spot on the spring purchase here. So what I ended up doing is I have a tapered ream, uh, reamer that I use, and I put that down in there. And what that does is it's only gonna hit on the top area, so we're not we're not reaming out the whole hole. We're just hitting this top area where it's deformed, and that's usually on the top and bottom where the rust will uh, rust lip will actually form. And I go just by hand. I just have a set of vice grips on here, just by hand, a little bit of grease. I just go through and I cut it out so I have nice shiny metal, and test fit my spring perches as I go. Another thing that you want to check is these spring perches, if you're reusing original parts, over the years they do wear and you will find you'll get spring perches that vary in diameter. So I was checking these and I got this all fit up and one of these spring perches just literally dropped in. Great, right? Well then I went to take another spring perch, drop it in, and it was stuck. It wouldn't even fit. Well, what I found is this spring perch is all worn out. It's, it's pitted, and you can see it has a lot of wear on it. You can see it's been abused at the spring, uh, where the spring shackle went. It's all worn out. So this thing is obviously pretty much no good other than just using for mock-up. But this one, I mic'd it out, and it was, it was the same diameter as some of the other ones I have. They're in much better shape. So I used this one and reamed just a little bit further, and now we have it to where it's, you know, it fits, but it's a nice, snug fit and everything fits in real good, and we are good to go. So I did that on both sides, and that'll help big time. I have these, these wedges here that go in, they're also the steering stops. Those are supposed to be a very tight fit because it is tapered, so I cleaned them all out really good, and then I tapped them in with a hammer to make sure they went all the way in and all the way out, um, and everything's good to go. So I have all this stuff plugged up so that when I go to paint, this axle, we don't get paint down in these areas and cause an issue, but um, I've learned from previous frustrations. Make sure you clean up all these bores, get them nice and clean and ready to go, uh, especially if you're using old swap meat or junkyard fine parts like I do. Uh, you need to go back and go through all these bores because a lot of times the bores are either rusty um, or deformed or whatever from heating and knocking them apart. Okay. All right, so let everything cool down, and now I got the spring perches uh, in the vise here. And I want to show you guys something that people a lot of times miss. Now, um, these spring perches are going to, they're, they're pretty clean, but if you see, there's little like specks on, on it. Aside from just the surface rust, there's like little specks all over it. Those little specks are like pieces of metal, I guess you could say, that are built up on it. And from when we were heating it, that those are the little things that were causing uh, it to stick and then also there was a little bit of rust here at the top and a little bit at the bottom. So all that combined definitely caused an issue when we were trying to pull it out. But all these little specks are actually like on top of the surface. So if you run your hand over this, you can actually just barely feel them. And if I try and fit this, even though it's pretty clean, I could like hose it all off with brake clean or whatever and this would seem smooth and everything would be okay. Just feel like it's okay. Then we go to slide it back in the axle that we already, the new axle that we already cleaned up and, and got the bore nice and smooth, we're gonna find that this is not going to fit. It's gonna be really tight. What you need to do is either take a sander or you can take on a drill, like a knotted wire wheel, and go over this whole thing and get everything nice and clean. And you basically just want a, a nice smooth machine surface. So I have the one over here on my temporary workbench here slash shipping area. Uh, and swap meat table. You can see this one here we have is nice and smooth and you can actually see the area where they turned it on the lathe when it was made originally. So that's what you want it to be like and then you want everything to fit in nice and easy by hand. Like that, nice press fit, not press fit, but nice tight slide in. Everything's good. So I gotta do the other one so that it fits this side and uh, continue cleaning everything up, but that's, uh, that's just a little tip there.
All right, so we're knocking the kingpin bushings out of these spindles for the 34. And I wanted to stop and just give a little, a uh, couple options for this. Uh, some people like to use a press uh, to, to knock these out, which can be handy if you have the exact right size um, piece that you can machine and press it out. It does work well, you can do it. But sometimes I like to show the down and dirty ways that you can do this. And sometimes, honestly, if the bushings cooperate, it's actually quicker this way, and I sometimes choose this over trying to get my press and, and get it all set up with just the right blocks so everything uh, sits perfectly straight. So one of the things I did is I just took some steel solid bar stock and I machined it up so that it is basically just undersized of the opening in the, uh, the kingpin bushing area in the spindle. And sometimes if they're not too bad, you can actually take this and just use it as a punch and you can knock it out and it'll actually work pretty well. Now if I have one that's stubborn, if you start hitting on it and after a handful of hits the bushing doesn't move or maybe you get it halfway and then it stops, don't try and force it. What'll happen is that because that, that bushing is basically brass um, or bronze bushing, it's softer than, than our punch here and it's gonna fold over and actually cause issues. So what I like to do is if it starts um, hanging up and it doesn't seem like it's moving, what I'll do is I actually take a hacksaw blade and I cut it off short. I mentioned this in another, another video, um, but I've, I've done this with just by hand with a hacksaw, but recently I started cutting these down and using them in the body saw, which works really well. So I used to do it by hand with a little handheld uh, hacksaw thing, but this is way better. So you can take this and basically just carefully stick it in the hole and sit and uh, cut it. And you can put a little slit in it right when it's about to cut all the way through. You can take a chisel and just tap it through. And then when you go to tap this, it'll actually break and relieve the pressure and it'll basically make it fall uh, right through or tap right through with our, with our little punch here. So I'm gonna take this. This one I already started tapping on a little bit and it seems to work okay. So I'm gonna keep, uh, Keep tapping on, see if this one will come out for me. And this one looks like it is gonna come. Of course, the one I did before didn't come and I used the, uh, the saw and this one comes out so far pretty easily. There we go. So that's just a, an easy way that you can do that. Like I said, here, the option, if it does get stuck and you have one that's a little tricky, it's easier to just take a little hacksaw blade, put it in your, in your body saw, put a little slit in it, and that will relieve the pressure and knock it out. Instead of trying to use a press and get yourself in trouble, uh, trying to press something in and maybe get stuck, this is a little bit easier and is the path of least resistance that works for me. All right, so we got the new bushings in and I have uh, a kingpin, kingpin reamer. This is an old blue point reamer that I found in my uh, auction swap meets hunts. And I found by far this is the best type of reamer to get if you can get one. If you can get an old snap-on blue point or even a KR Wilson uh, cutter that is made specifically for doing Ford kingpins, it takes some of the guesswork or hassle out of having an adjustable king, uh, reamer. The adjustable reamers are definitely nice and you can do all kinds of different stuff with them. The only thing I've had with them is um, it's you have that slight worry that you're going to uh, go just a hair too far as you're reaming it up and it doesn't fit or it ends up being a little too loose. I've had it happen before. So I got a stash of these Blue Point reamers a number of years ago at an estate auction. I have all different ones from big truck Ford to Chevy truck to uh, all kinds of old Studebaker, all kinds of old cars, and they're all this style. So the nice thing about this is it has like a pilot reamer that basically can fit down through like this and is a nice tight fit and you can basically tap it down through 
and it will locate itself right into the bottom bushing. So as you're cutting, it's going to be locating itself in the bottom one and making a true straight cut all the way through. And your top cutting surface, or your, your cutting surface is here at the top. And as you run that down through, the bottom one's gonna keep it true so that you don't get a crooked cut. So that's the one thing that I really like about these with it keeping it locating like that. It's kind of foolproof and even for a dummy like me, uh, it can it can work pretty well. So you can use uh, all kind any kind of different tool. I usually I'm pretty basic, but I just use my vintage adjustable wrench and give a little downward pressure. I greased everything up, including the reamer, so that it cuts nicely. But basically, just press down a little bit, and it will cut. As you go. Not a quick process. I'm sure you can get a power tool to do this if you if you want, but uh, I don't know. I've always liked doing this by hand. I can be careful. Power tool, you can't really feel what you're doing. With this, I can kind of tell what's going on and get a good feel for how it's cutting. Like I said, this bottom, that bottom locating pilot reamer makes it super nice because you just, you know that you're getting a true cut all the way down through. And when you put the new, when you put your kingpin in there, it just literally just like will tap in, you know, with very little pressure. We're almost through the top. There we go. So it'll slide right down into the next one. We can do the final cut on that one. It's already cut just a, it's, it's gone through and just kept everything true in the bottom. And we can start cutting the bottom. And then the top of course is the correct diameter for the kingpin so it keeps it true as well as you're cutting. So you don't get any wobble as you're turning it, which makes it nice. All right, so we got the spring all uh, cleaned up here and got all the bushings reamed and everything. We're basically ready to start partially going back and forth, so back together. Um, so what I'm doing is just putting some fresh grease, even though we degreased everything, it was just clumps and clumps of dried up grease. And we're gonna just grease each, each of these so that when they go back and forth, back together, everything will slide nice, won't have any weird squeaks or anything. But you can usually see on these original springs, where the spring sat and how far it went out. Um, we're gonna try and utilize these spring, the spring that was in the car, and just take uh, a leaf or a couple leaves out on top of the drop axle to get it to sit how I want. I already kind of have recognized I may have to take the axle in and out a couple times to get it sitting exactly how we want, but that's part of the fun of doing these cars. They're not as easy to lower as your, uh, as your girlfriend's Honda. So you can't do it in five minutes, so a couple day process. So I'm gonna get these all greased up. We're gonna put the spring back on the axle with the wishbone and all that stuff. Um, shortly, we need to get the kingpins and the spindles back on. We're gonna heat and drop those. We've showed that before, uh, but we need to heat and drop the spindles. So we got a bunch of work to do here. We're gonna keep moving, but that is where we're at. Greasing up springs. So we gotta put all our, our uh, bearings and stuff. Isn't there washers too to go in there? Yeah. It was missing them. Should probably Ooh. Yeah, right there. The ones on the floor. They got more of them too we'll probably need they weren't even in. Oh, okay, just so you shim it. Yeah, so these go on the bottom and, and you're supposed to the bottom. Put, yeah. Well no it goes down here. The bearing goes, um, you were... Yeah, yeah, the bearing goes down there, but this is the bottom of the spindle. No, that's the top. Okay, the, you the, the heavy parts on the bottom. No, because your steer, your tie rod goes underneath. This is the top steering arm, and then the tie rod goes between the two bottoms. Well, you have, uh, you need, you have to wait, because you yeah. have to put your, your thrust washers in there to take up the gap. And then the bearing will go. The bearing goes down, you probably know this, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but 
this bearing goes down. The open part down. Yep. And then, depending on the axle, yeah, this one will probably need like one. They usually only take about one. All right, so after some little uh, quote unquote TV magic, we got this all heated and bent. Uh, we started bending in the vise and got most of the, the first bends done. And then we realized that the tie rod was hitting the vise and we couldn't really get everything figured out how we needed. So we put this on the ground and actually this is probably one of the best ways I've figured out how to do this. And um, I change it all the time as you're always learning. But what I did is we used these old jack stands, my buddy Pete, who I've learned a lot of stuff about early Fords from. He's an old Ford guru around here, and he donated these uh, old banjo rear axle tube jack stands that he made years ago, because um, he's not using them anymore to me. And we set this on the axle, got the axle sitting nice and straight level, and then I used these adjustable jack stands under the tie rods. And we basically moved the tie rod back, heated and bent, and then pushed the, the jack stand forward and checked where our clearances were. Um, with the uh, with it sitting up on the on the ball and socket was all connected and then we found out if we had to tweak it while everything was still hot we were able to just like heat a, you know put a few seconds more of heat to get that dull red back into it and bend it a little more so we got everything sitting that was a pretty easy way because once we had this one side bent or whichever side we did first um, we left it on the jack stand and it was set and we had you know we used our finger basically to get an idea of the of the gap and we got it really darn close, happy with it. Everything uh, is connected and steers good so we know we don't have any crazy binding or anything. But last thing, this is a glaring issue. I've been avoiding this whole project, but I think I need to address it. So this steering arm is off the original 34 spindle. Uh, 32 to 34, they actually cast this steering arm right into the spindle. A lot of times when guys would do juice brakes on these on these old hot rods, they would use the 46 to 48 or even the 39 40 uh, backing plates that were that bolted on with the juice brakes, and they needed a steering arm solution. So they would cut the steering arm off of their um, early Ford, and they would weld it. Now it looks like it's old nickel rod. My dad's you know an old time welder and kind of said it looked like they used the right rod, but you just look over here. There's like holes in the weld and. Just, even though it's worked for years, it, it scares me, and I'd, I'd rather not have to have that in the back of my head when driving the car. So, we're gonna cut that off. I have a bolt-on style hoop steering arm that I welded up and braced a while ago for another project, and it ended up putting like a chrome one. I think it was for the free tee. So, the nice thing with these are is they bolt right through these two bolt holes here, and uh, holds the backing plates on and obviously that'll sit down lower but that that is a bolt on option we're not welding on the spindles and uh, i think it'll be a good solution so i'm going to cut that off clean it all up and then we can bolt this arm on put the backing plates on and then roll it under and see how it sits height wise and see if we got what we need for the uh for the drop on this
All right, so as you guys saw, I'm pretty psyched on the uh, on how the car is sitting and I can move forward. It looks like the wishbones won't hit anything, so I don't think we're going to have to split those. So I'm gonna move forward with getting everything connected and bolted together here at the end of this video. So uh, one thing that you may uh, forget if you're taking spring packs apart, and it's happened to me, I, I do it all the time actually. Uh, I forget that when we take leaves out, Basically, your spring clamp and also your bolt that goes through the middle are made to be uh, the right size for the right number of leaves that are going in there. So you may have an issue if you take some out. So I took three of the top leaves out on top of the drop axle. Uh, the drop and the drop axle, I thought that was gonna be just right. And it looks like it's gonna sit exactly how I want for this car. Uh, but what I need to do is take up the thickness of these springs uh, on the bottom end of the spring pack so that our spring clamp can actually like keep the spring uh, in the cross member tight. So, you can see that this, this little bottom spring clamp has a little step up that actually sits in the cross member and when you bolt everything up, that touches on the spring at these two little pads uh, right here, right there and right there. Those touch and that's actually what pushes up on the spring and keeps it from floating around when you go on a, like over an overpass or something where suspension could drop. Uh, this is what keeps the spring tight up in the cross member so you don't have the spring floating around. So if you take uh, leaves out, this will bottom out and these little ears will actually hit on the cross member and you won't have enough, um, you won't have a, enough material here that it can actually touch. So what I do is take roughly the thickness of the leaves that I took out and put a piece of metal in there to accommodate. So I have some little solid bar stock that measures roughly with the thickness of this. Um, if I clamp these together tight, they're about the same thickness as this piece of metal. So that should work pretty good. Keep everything tight. I put this on here and I usually just TIG weld around the edges and that will uh, keep everything good and tight so we can just take it on and off just like stock. So I'm gonna get this uh, welded up, then we can start putting the front suspension together, hook the brakes back up, and hopefully be able to uh, pull it out of the shop here with the new stance really soon. All right, so got the car pulled outside and we could finally look at it out the open with the new dropped front axle on it and all the work that we did. Uh, it was basically like a week's worth of work uh, on and off throughout a week to get the front end apart and back together. We split it up in two videos just to make it uh, a little more cohesive and uh, cars out in the open, it's really awesome. But the downside is now that we can step back further away, just as I had kind of thought in the beginning, the rear end needs to come down just a smidge. So I think in a future project, I'm gonna pull a leaf or two out of the rear just to get the rear end just down just a little bit. But uh, the front end sits perfect. I'm super happy with how it sits. Everything looks really great. And uh, this thing is, is coming around. It's really changed the look of the car, having a, the front end lowered down and taking away some of that wheel gap. It looks so much better. So. 
Um, just have a little bit more work to do on this thing and we could finally start driving it around a little more than just around the block, which is gonna be really, really awesome. And we hope that we can show the car to Barry's family um, after we get this thing just a little bit further, we can meet up with the family and show them the car. Even though we couldn't show it to him, we can hopefully show it to his family and get them reunited with the car to check it out. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the new stance of the uh, 34 Ford.